So this is going to be a short uh, demo of a, a procedure to find uh, printed circuit board shorts using a milliometer. Uh, I created a contrived example just to illustrate how I did it. Uh, I'll first go through a demo, quick demo, and then uh, after that I will uh, show some readings at different points on the printed circuit board using the milliometer. So you get an idea of what kind of resistances to expect and um, how you would probably go about finding it. I mean, each procedure or for each situation is going to be different, of course. But in this case, I since I knew my PC board and I knew uh, the circuit and everything, it was a bit easier. But in general, this procedure can be used to narrow down such a short or a bunch of shorts. So here's a simple uh, demonstration of uh, measuring trace impedances or trace resistances using the milliometer. This can be helpful for identifying shorts. I actually put a short on this one um, at one of these pin locations where it's likely to happen like on one of these uh, smaller components uh, where a ground and a power is actually close to each other. I do have, since I do know this trace very well, I mean the PC board very well, I was able to identify the lines where it's likely to happen but in general you would need to know the PC board layout fairly well to be able to actually identify these lines. So um, I don't have the right probe actually for doing uh, tracing of shorts uh, because this is not a very sharp point. Ideally you would need uh, something like this which has a sharp tip. So what I have on this uh, PC board is a short between a plus uh, 10 volt supply and ground and I'm going to see if I can uh, roughly locate it uh, using one of these uh, uh, one of the points which I can easily see here so one is ground which is uh, over here at the resistor input and the other one is on uh, supply on this IC here so potentially the, I should be able to get a short reading uh, low impedance uh, reading here. So as you can see I got a reading of 52.4, 52.6 uh, milli ohms which indicates my short is you know fairly in this region. It could be but let's check another point where to see if it changes significantly. So if I do it on this side here I get 109, 110 milli ohms. There's another point over here that gives me 135 ohms. So most likely the short is somewhere in this region because the resistance is smallest. If I go closer in, I would be able to actually find, uh, easily be able to find it better. Uh, let's look at this one. So that's around 25 milli ohms. So I'm getting closer. The actual short is right on this pin here, uh, on this uh, transmission gate. And so I think uh, this is one way one can brute force find shorts uh, on a PC board where you have, uh, where you do know what the traces are doing and what the circuit looks like. So here's a close up view of the PC board I'm trying to uh, uh, find the short in. The short actually is over here. Um, this is called, I'm calling it ground zero, so G0 and V0. So G0 is ground connection and V0 is the voltage uh, connection of that particular power supply. So we'll um, look at different impedance or resistances between different points on this uh, in the next few slides. But um, so we'll just uh, show some of these points here. So G1 is one of the grounds which is at the resistor input for this. Uh, this is an earlier version of my milliometer. So that is a ground input for the resistor. And that ground actually connects to this plane on top on the back side of the PC board. So there's a connection here which is shown in the blue line. Uh, all the red lines are for the power connection. So there's a, a VP is that main node for the power supply uh, coming off this chip. And there's a connection at the back of the board again on this red trace that comes into this side of the board, uh, this via uh, on, the, on the IC itself. And that then distributes itself across these thinner traces to these other chips and uh, other components. So um, G1 is this point here and then we have G2 which is another ground plane connection here at the output of the milliometer. G3 is a pro point. G4 is on the IC555 chip. Uh, 
G5 is another um, transmission gate uh, uh, ground input. G6 is a capacitor for the um, offset correction. Um, I'm sorry, G6 is another capacitor for this chip here. Um, and uh, for the voltage nodes, there's V1, which is on this chip. Um, and there's V2, which is a pro point. V3 is the um, IC for the um, instrumentation amplifier power supply. And then V4 is on um, this uh, transmission gate again. And V5 is another transmission gate. And V6 is on the offset cancellation chip. So V0 again is, and V0 and G0 are where the short is, and you can see uh, there's a slight connection made here, which I uh, created just for this demo purpose. Um, so we'll now next look at the different impedances that I measured across this, these different points, uh, just to show an example. I'm not going to go through all the points, but just a few to illustrate how the resistance changes and why you would probably most likely need a milliometer to do these kind of measurements, uh, a regular meter which has a 1 ohm or even a 0.1 ohm resolution probably is not going to be good enough. So here's the first case I did a measurement with uh, the milliometer. The axes represent the two points. Uh, in this case it's V2G6. Uh, the heavier traces in the yellow are the ground plane which shows as a lower impedance. So I just try to uh, show that uh, in, a, in a visual manner. And then the dotted lines are basically the connections on the other side of the board. So if you look at this one, is probably one of the highest resistances I got on between these two points on the ground plane and the supply that I was trying to measure because these are actually traversing fairly long thin lines, especially on the bottom part of the board. And this resistance came out to be 146.3 milliohms, which is still uh, a reasonably large number, but uh, probably not that easy to measure with a regular uh, ohm meter. The next uh, couple of points are between V1 on the top of the board and G2 on the bottom side of the board. Again, a very contrived example, but um, you can see that the re resistance came out to be 122.8 milliohms, mostly due to the long connection from the top to the bottom on the other side of the board, plus some short traces on the bottom side of the board. The next one is between V1 and G1. So G1 is now getting closer to the short. And as you can see, between the last measurement and this one, the ground plane impedance is around 10 milliohms. So the ground plane actually doesn't help much uh, if you have a fairly strong and well uh, connected ground plane. So we're getting closer. The next two measurements point is between V6 and G1. So now we are on the bottom side of the board. But because the long thin trace is kind of leading us uh, astray a bit, uh, the impedance came out to be or resistance 98.8 milliohms this time. The next one is going to confuse you a little bit because again uh, on the other side of the board we have a strong ground plane connecting to the bottom ground plane but the actual trace lines for the sh for the higher resistance line is fairly short and so the resistance came out to be 54.2 oh, milliohms. Uh, hopefully this will lead us to the next uh, and final step. So based on our last few measurements we kind of narrowed it down to the left side and bottom side of the board. Uh, G0 is that small via which connects the ground of that transmission gate chip to the ground plane to the left and V0 is the is the line, the power supply line which is uh, diagonal uh, and on this particular image and the probe point is shown there on that um, scratched out trace. So this came out to be 14.4 milliohms and I think that pretty much narrows down that short to the location shown on the chip, uh, on the transmission gate chip on the first two pins on the right bottom right. So if the real chip were there, uh, you would probably need to do a visual inspection to find the exact shot. And uh, this is one way of going about it. Of course, this is a very contrived example. Uh, you, I mean, you'll have to use some common sense and kind of uh, in your own situation on how to find these shots. But the milliometer gen is definitely helpful in actually narrowing down the location close to where it could be. The other ways to measure or to detect shots is to apply a current through the two traces and then using an infrared um, or IR camera you could probably see some heating effects and that might be uh, depending on the amount of current you could probably determine where the shot is. 
Hopefully this video gave you some idea about um, detecting shots using a millimeter and um, if you have any comments on the procedures or if you think uh, there are better ways of doing this, uh, do uh, write. Thank you.